out of the box or out of the wall, whatever you want to call it, we have, oh darn it, the town that dreaded sundown. So apparently this is based off a true story that something happened in 1946 in Texarkana border. Should you dread the sundown? Uh. Gross. <laughs> Chase Miyake here at the Blue Futon reviewing The Town That Dreaded Sundown. What's it about? I kind of already gave you the synopsis during the intro, which was no joke. In 1946, five people were murdered. I think they were murdered. Yeah, five people killed in Texarkana, Arkansas, or Texarkana, Texas, because it's literally on the border of that. And this is based off the true story where it says in the movie that everything happened in this movie is true, except names were changed. So I like this film. It was a weird one. This is a weird, I think, 1977 movie. Wait, no. Yeah, 1977 rated R movie. Called, it comes with the Evictors as well, so that's why I got a little bit confused. Anyway, I think the acting's okay. The overall story is okay. You can tell it's completely dated. You can tell it's from the 70s. There are some creepy moments, especially with the trombone, but the overall movie experience was a little bit under mid-tier, in my opinion. So let's talk about the positives. When the kills do happen, it's pretty creepy. And the bag on the guy's head, it's pretty creepy. Especially a trombone. I will never, ever, ever, ever look at a trombone the same way again. For people that don't know musical instruments, a trombone is where you blow, and you have the little slider right here. It's a brass instrument. I was just say they do something with that and a knife. And now every time I see a trombone, I'm going to be like, don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. I'm going to be bobbing and weaving, bobbing and weaving. And then when we talk about the acting, there are some good acting elements in this story, especially the Texas Ranger and one of the main uh, sheriffs in the Texas, you know, courthouse or police station, if you want to put it that way. I think the acting there is pretty good. And so when the kills do happen on screen, some of them are pretty brutal. Like, I wasn't expecting to be this brutal and this realistic. Yeah, there might be the trombone scene, but nothing was overdone in this movie because they did want to make it based on a true story. So I understand why they didn't want to, like, you know, graphic, make it graphic or grotesque because when a gunshot happens, it looks just like a gunshot. It doesn't take anything overdue. Yeah, there's some blood on the ground. There's a stab wound. You get what you get on screen. And there are some good stunts in this movie, except for just one where the bad guy has to be in the driver's seat and they're doing a circle. You're like, yeah, he's hanging on for dear life. And you're expecting for one time for him to fall out. And he finally does. But there are some good stunts there. However, when looking at the movie as a whole, it's outdated. The tone is really, really awkward. And what do I mean by that? Uh, there's a character named Sparkplug in this movie. Yes, Sparkplug. And he's there for the kind of comic relief of like, oh, let me go get the car. Wait, I forgot the keys. Or when he's driving down the road super, super quick and he runs into this big ditch and uh, full of water. That's not really, it's like a pond of water. Or even not even a pond because the car's kind of right there and they're kind of walking through. I don't know what to call it. I'm not that smart. But just that elements of like slapstick comedy in a murder like true story like this kind of really felt off-putting for what they're trying to do it was just like okay it's really really weird because we're just seeing like trombone kill trombone kill and then five minutes later he's like i can't drive this car and he's flying into the ravine with water you're just like the tone is really weird really weird and some of the acting on those set levels is not the greatest because, I mean, it's a 1977 movie. Even the guy who acted in this movie basically said acting was a job for me. We knew not all these were going to be a blockbuster to go to the Oscars. But they were there to have fun and actually tell a story. And I think as a storytelling perspective, this does tell the story based on a true story. And they kind of do it pretty accurately and try to play tribute. Homage is more the right word to the people the tragedy that occurred in 1946, especially at the very end, about talking about what these sheriffs have done in the past when they passed away. So I think as a movie experience, it is worth watching and kind of see where this story went, went, to see where the story went. And because I'm pretty sure if you weren't in Texarkana, you don't know anything about this whatsoever. But when you talk about the tone of the movie, the acting and the dating of the movie, it really, really does show. So the town that dreaded Sunfall, 1977, will receive a two and a half out of five of food times. It goes at 50%. Let's see the correction news course gave this one. And it's sundown, not sunfall. Is there such thing as sundown, sunfall? 
I don't know. Anyway, critics a 42% with 12 of them. Audience score 40% with over 1,000. No critic consensus. Now, I truly, I truly could see that being at 42 and 40 just because, I mean, it is a movie. It's short. It doesn't overstate its welcome, but you're just like, yeah, this is outdated for sure. So 42, 40, 50. Chase Hawk with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. One of the things Blue Futon Topia, you Blue Futon, you think, watch about a fantastic day. You know what? There is a sequel to this movie. Or is it a sequel? Or a remake? Or a homage? But we're about to find out. Yes, we are.